Hey everybody, welcome back to Country Living Homestead. Today I'm going to teach you how to build a DIY Joe Salatin style chicken tractor for your meat birds and I'm going to include measurements so you can build one of these yourself. Stick around! Okay, so you may be asking what in the world is a chicken tractor? Well, so a chicken tractor is to give you a portable area for your meat birds or chickens. You can even use them for layers as well. So what this helps you do is you can move them from area to area on your land and it allows them to graze on the grass in the fields or wherever you decide to put it, but it's very easily portable. So that way you can move it anywhere you want. So now that's going to give you two opportunities. One, it's going to be able to give you a nice area for your chickens and two, it's actually going to give you an opportunity to put your chickens there if you don't have a hoop house, if you don't have a barn. So those are all different options that, uh, that you can use this chicken tractor for. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to be starting off by using these repurposed 1x4s. And these are 10 foot long. And one thing you'll realize when you do start a homestead that you try to repurpose any material that you possibly can so that way you can reuse it and put it to work for you so now as you can see these are not pressure treated boards and i know we get a lot of comments about some of my builds by not using pressure treated lumber but we feel that it's actually the safest for us because we don't have any of those chemicals that are leaching into our growing soils and things like that so that's one thing that you need to keep in mind whenever you're utilizing pressure treated lumber. And another reason that we're not using pressure treated lumber is because this is what we have. Sometimes, especially in today's age with the cost of building supplies, you have to use what you've got. We don't have pressure treated. This is what we do have. We got it out of an old shed that we took apart last year. So this is free. Okay, so the materials that we did purchase, we ended up buying some hardware cloth from tractor supply and the hardware cloth is two feet wide by 10 feet long so my thought is is to build this about two feet tall and that's basically going to allow enough room for the chickens to fit inside and not really and waste them, any type of space yeah it'll give them a little bit of extra space but they're chickens so they're not going to need a huge amount of head space so that's just another way for us to save on materials and especially the hardware cloth because it's expensive yes definitely that stuff is very expensive so um, building it two feet tall that's going to allow us to utilize the whole roll and then these boards being 10 feet long that's going to allow it to obviously be the length as well so uh, plan is is take a two by four for the corners we're going to cut those down to two foot long and utilize those for the framing but the key to all of this is is portability these boards are very thin which is going to make this very light so it's going to allow you to pull this anywhere that you want and it's not going to take like 10 people to do it so that's really important which is gonna be really nice because we have used this design before. In fact, we used it for about eight years to raise our meat birds. And the last time we made it, we used two by fours, right? Yes. And that was a little heavier than we wanted. So with these, I think we're gonna lose some of that weight. So we're gonna give it a shot. Let's see what it does. Okay, so what we're doing now is I cut three pieces of two by four, and these are 24 inches long. So you can lay them out. We're gonna build it side to side. And basically for the middle one, I just measured five feet. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's basically just an added brace, but we're just gonna go ahead and put it together like this. And then there'll be another board down here, obviously, but we're gonna get this one put together first. So let's get to it. So I'm using these two inch deck screws. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're putting these screws in, make sure that they're not too long because I know going back to what we were saying, repurposing, I just had these on hand. So 
So if you do have some screws, make sure they don't go out on the other side because you don't want your chickens to be getting caught up on those screw heads because those can tend to be very, very sharp. Okay, so again, I mean, it's not going to look perfect, but we're repurposing materials. So basically we already have these on hand, so it's really not costing us hardly anything with the exception of the hardware cloth that we need to put in. And plus there's gonna be a few extras that we're gonna be doing, so stay tuned to check that out too. Okay, so one thing I wanna bring up is Obviously, we're going to be putting the hardware cloth on the outside. So when you take a look, these are higher than this piece. So basically, what I'm going to do is cut one of these 1x4s because it'll be the same width, this length, so that way everything is flush and level. So when the hardware cloth goes over top of it, there's not going to be any gaps or anything like that. So that's what we're going to do next. Those look amazing. Nice job. Thank you. Nice and flush. Definitely should make that hardware cloth lay a lot nicer. Because mm -hmm. I remember the last one we built, it did have the gaps in it because I never did this. So it always had that gap in between and it was always kind of a pain. Yeah, and so. it made the hardware cloth a little more difficult to attach. So I think I'm this hoping... Way. This should eliminate that. Yeah, this should be a lot easier. And it looks nicer too. Definitely. Okay, let's put on some hardware cloth. All right. Okay, so just a little bit of advice. When you're opening these rolls of hardware cloth, make sure when you take off this wire that actually holds it all together, that you be very careful because this just has a tendency, it's packed so tightly that it just unravels real fast. So make sure that you don't get your fingers caught up or just tries to unravel by itself. Or get slapped right in the face with it. Well, yeah, that could, that could hurt too. Okay, so you can see on this one end, they did give us just a little bit more than 10 feet. So we'll just trim that off. I'm just gonna use these snips right here. We'll get that trimmed off, but that's looking pretty good. That's what we're after. Okay, so we've got one side done. Now we're gonna repeat the process and build the other side exactly the same. However, the ends are going to be built a little bit differently because I've got an idea as to what we're going to do to make this even easier to move around. So we're going to go ahead and repeat the process on the, on the other side, just like this. Let's get to it. Okay, so there is side number two complete. So now we've got two sides. Now let's make the ends. Okay, so for the ends, I'm actually gonna cut these at about eight feet. So we're gonna make the ends eight foot and 
I'll tell you what we're going to be doing. So my thought is, I've got these wheels. And what these wheels are going to do is they're going to be on the back end. And I'll, I'll have to show you how it's going to work out. But when you build this, you're going to need two of these. I got these at Tractor Supply. They were like 12 bucks a piece. But my thought is, is when you lift up the one side of the tractor, it's going to give this room to move. So that's the plan. Let's put it to work. Okay, so for this end, again, I'm going to be cutting three pieces of 2 by 4 to 24 inches long. And it's almost looking like, because I just tested it over here, these wheels on the corners should work out pretty good. But there's my thought. So I'm hoping that basically you're going to put this level with the bottom. So when you lift up on the front, it's going to allow this wheel to hit the ground and to be able to easily pull it across the field. So I'm hoping that's going to work out. So we'll check it out. So let's... Okay, so now we got three sides done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another one of those pieces at eight feet and go from this brace over to this brace just to try to stand it up. And that should hold it into place while I figure out how I'm going to put those corners together. And then I'm going to be installing the wheels. And we'll see how that's going to work. Let's do it. Okay, so this is actually looking like a really good size. So it's a 10 by 8. And now I just kind of got this leaned up just to kind of give an idea on the size of it. But this is looking good. This is exactly what I was hoping. So back here is where we're going to put those wheels. So hopefully when you lift up on the front, it'll allow those wheels to hit the ground and be able to maneuver this thing pretty easy. So, fingers crossed. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so, for the wheels, what you want to do is just take a board, lay it flat, and you want to make sure that that wheel is just touching the board, just like that. And then we're going to attach it. So, my thought process behind this is I've seen other tractors that were built and they use, like, the lawnmower wheels on the side. But the problem with that is, is you're always going to have a gap underneath because that, that mower wheel is always going to have that extra space. So that way it has room to be able to move. So you're always going to have that space where, you know, predators could get in or whatever. So my thought with this is it's always going to remain level until you lift up the front. Then it's going to allow this wheel to hit. So I just found a couple screws. It looks like it's going to work out pretty well, but I just want to make sure that this is level so that way it's not leaving any gaps underneath of the tractor frame. So just a thought. So we're going to give it a go and see how it works. Okay, so there's what it's going to look like when it's put on to the end here. 
and I literally, I just tried it and it's, it's amazing. Like this is going to work so well. And this is where it's at right here. Let's keep going. Okay, so now I'm going to attach this back wall. I've got these three inch deck screws. I'm just going to mount them to this corner to shore that up. We're going to do the same thing over here. And we're moving right along. Okay, so we got the back wall put on. Now it's time to build the front wall. And let's continue this project. Now, the reason why I chose to put the wheels on like this is I was kind of inspired by my dolly, believe it or not. And that's what gave me the idea of putting the wheels on like this. So we'll see how it works. Okay, so for the front, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did on the back. So I'm gonna cut three 24 inch length two by fours and also two eight foot length one by fours I believe is what those are so we're gonna get those cut and go from there Okay, so we got the front wall done. Let's go ahead and get that attached. Give it a go. It seems like it never fails. Try to start doing a project and it's pouring down rain again. So I had to take cover here in the greenhouse the unfinished greenhouse it's almost done but we're getting there but we actually needed this uh chicken tractor pretty bad for our meat birds so i had to jump on that project you'll realize when you're homesteading you go from one project to the next to the next and eventually you go back and finish the other projects and it's always a work in progress but hey you know what that's why we do it it's a lot of fun but it's pouring down rain right now Okay, so now the rain has finally stopped. The snow is finally gone again. So now I'm going to get back to this chicken tractor. Uh, all the sides are put on, so that's all good to go. Uh, I did test this to be able to move it around. And one problem I was finding is this middle area is kind of like sagging a little bit and dragging. So what I've decided to do is I just got an extra wheel and I'm going to put it right there. But for now, I'm going to start building the top. And basically what I'm going to do is I've got, I've got a three-foot roll of hardware cloth, three-foot wide, should I say, and 10-foot long. Uh, so I've got that, and then I've got a two-foot wide, 10-foot long, other roll of hardware cloth. And I'm going to use that to get me to the middle here. But I'm almost thinking that I'm going to definitely need some more to get the other five feet. So, But I'm also going to be doing like a uh, like a flip door so i want to be able to easily access the chickens when they're inside here and also be able to you know feed them water them uh, all that good stuff so i'm feeling that uh, probably putting uh, a nice little flip top door that should work out pretty well and as far as security goes these chicken tractors I, I like i said i built one it lasted us for about six years and literally there was nothing that got into this chicken tractor absolutely nothing at all 
I literally had a fox climb on top of the chicken coop trying to figure out how to get in there. And we actually had a trail cam set up because we were wondering what in the world kept coming around the chickens. Well, we figured it out and literally this fox was on top of our chicken tractor trying to get to the chickens, but it was unable to get in. So these are extremely secure. It's a, certainly a great option for meat birds. So let's get to it. Let's get this top built. Okay, so here's how I'm kind of laying it out. I'm just kind of eyeballing things here and trying to figure out some problems when I, when I go. So what I am seeing, I'm going to try to uh, trim these off so that way they are to the edges over here. But now, as you can see, when you go to lay the hardware cloth on, there's going to be a gap here in between. So what I'm going to probably do is just maybe cut a strip, uh, maybe a lathe strip or something, uh, and put in there so that way it kind of encloses that in and gives me something to attach that hardware cloth to. So let's give it a shot and see how that works. Okay, so after I put the hardware cloth up here, that was a three foot wide stuff. Uh, this is about the measurement right here. So I'm just gonna measure this. And it looks to be, let's say 32 inches. So I'm putting another one by four at 32 inches. So I'm just gonna mark this, cut that to size, and then probably just take a lathe strip put right through here. And that should enclose that all in. And then I can lay that this hardware cloth across there and staple it just like we did on the sides. So let's get to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut two lathe strips, 32 inches wide, or long should I say, that's gonna fit right in this area right here. That's gonna enclose that in. And then we're gonna start putting the hardware cloth on top of it. Okay, now I've got the strips applied. That should take care of any open areas there, make it more secure. So now it's time to put on the hardware cloth. Okay, so that went on pretty nice. Now I just need to trim off the excess and move on to the next area. So I'm gonna probably do the same thing. Take one of these strips and put it right here just to close that in. See, that closed in nicely. So that is certainly predator proof. So let's keep going. So the two strips it looks like I'm going to need over here are approximately 21 and 1 fourth inches long. So let's get them cut. Okay, there's two pieces up. So just need to trim this off a little bit more. And the way that I'm stapling these, just so you know, I'm going across where these are coming together, kind of going across and it kind of grabs it from all directions. So you can staple it on there however you want, but that's just how I do it because I think it's probably the most secure way to do it. But there you go. It's coming along pretty nice. Okay, so I got these handles. This is where I'm gonna be installing them. So that's gonna give us a little bit easier way to pull this thing around. But problem I'm seeing, check out the screws. These are some monsters. And when you put them up against there, well, guess what? It's gonna go all the way through. So what I'm probably gonna to have to do is at least get them installed. Once they're installed, then I'll just get my cutoff wheel Cut off the excess, no big deal. Let's do it.
Okay, so you can see what I was talking about, how those screws are coming out the other end. But hey, we can handle that with this little cutoff wheel right here. So let's get this cut off because that's way too dangerous. You can get scratched, cut, who knows. Let's get those out of here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, I've got another 3 foot by 10 foot piece of hardware cloth. And we're just going to put that piece here. I'm going to leave this area which is the two foot area, that's going to be the flip up door. So we're gonna be building that here pretty soon, but let's get this piece of hardware cloth done. Okay, so I measured in between here and this is 32 inches once again. So I'm gonna cut some strips there to enclose that and then we'll get this hardware cloth put on. Okay, so now we've got all those pieces of hardware cloth on, looking good. Now it's time to build the flip top door and we're just about done, looking good. Okay, so for the door, I'm actually going to be using these lathe strips here. So I'm just gonna cut one to length here like so. Actually, it looks like it's already cut to length, perfect. So don't even need to cut that. So it's an eight foot lay strip. And then I've got these heavy duty corner braces. So that's what's gonna put this together like so. So that'll be on all four corners. We'll attach that. So let's get these pieces cut. Okay, so I just measured this spot from here to here and it's 21 and three quarters inches. So I'm gonna cut two of those and then I'm gonna grab those corner brackets and get those installed. We're getting closer. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Got those corner braces put on. Now it's gonna be time to put the screen on, the hardware cloth, and then we'll install some hinges and get this finished up. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. It actually worked out really well, so just need to trim this excess off and install some hinges. Okay, so for hinges, I had these laying around, so I'm gonna go ahead and give those a go. But that's what it's gonna look like. A little bit of a gap there, so that way there's an overhang here to be able to grab a hold of the door and easily open it up. So let's get these hinges installed. Okay, so for the last and final hinge, just to keep the gap there the same for the hinges, I just had to put a crescent wrench in there to widen it up a little bit to install this last hinge. So that should do the trick. Okay, so the door is installed. Actually works pretty nice. Check that out. Should easily be able to put in the feed, the water. That should be good to go. So there you have it, folks. A simple DIY meat bird chicken tractor that is extremely light very easy to move these wheels are an absolute game changer uh, if you end up building one of these i highly recommend putting these wheels on like this and you can move this thing around like with ease it is so easy to move around it's it's so light i mean this is going to be awesome so just wanted to say thank you again for stopping by the country living homestead don't forget to like comment 
and please subscribe. Have a fantastic day.